Hello, and welcome to this Crazy Talk Animator 3.1 video tutorial on how to make a fully functional masked eye. So here on the screen, I googled uh, these cartoons called Adventure Time, which is a cartoon based on a little boy called Flynn and his orange dog named Jake. So both of these characters have two types of eyes. Flynn, for example, has these iris, these beady eyes with no eye whites. And then his dog, Jake, has eye whites for eyes with no pupils and uh, no irises. So these are two types of characters, uh, two types of eyes that we usually find in cartoons. Then we can go to SpongeBob SquarePants. Everyone knows SpongeBob. And we can try to see the facial expressions. Now, for, for SpongeBob, he has three elements in his eyes. The, the first one is the eye white, which is the entire area of the eye, followed by the iris. And then we have the eye mask. This basically covers the eyelids, the areas of the eyelids on top and at the bottom. That will ensure that our irises do not uh, move out of that area of my eye white, that my iris and my pupil stay inside that area. Okay, so those are the three examples, the three elements, I'm sorry. So for when we use a sprite editor and we open the template, the PSD group template, you'll notice that we have six folders for each eye. We have um, normal, smile closed, eye closed, scared, and all of these six have child groups, subgroups, which is the iris, the eye white, and the mask for each different subgroup, okay? So here I have my original character. And as you can see, the types of, of eyes that he's got, uh, just like the film character, which is a beady eye. And if I select that, you'll notice that in my folder, under the normal folder and in the subfolder for iris, I have one image called iris normal. And I'm gonna close that, turn that off. And the other one is smile close. This is another eye pose. This one is called Iris smile close. So all of these, I am going to put them inside the iris folder of my character. Or well, that's where they were originally. Uh, because this character doesn't have eye whites or even the eye mask. It only has one eye and all of this can be found inside uh, the iris uh, folder, each, each eye pose. All right. So what I wish to do right now is that I am going to remove the eyes that I have for my character and I'm gonna add my own eyes. So let me turn all of these on so we can see um, all my eyes and I'm gonna lock my face so that we don't move this. And I'm gonna select all my left eye, delete that, all my right eye components and I'm gonna delete that too. And we're gonna open our own PSD file, our source file for the eyes that I created. So I have six different eye expressions for both left and the right eye. Some of these have the eye whites with the iris and the eye mask. Others don't. They simply have just one image on them. So, for example, in the normal folder, I have iris, eye white, and the mask. The iris will govern the pupil. The eye white, naturally, will be the entire area of the eye. And then the mask can be um, basically just a copy of the eye white. Here we made a gray um, sample of it. So the cool thing is that you don't really need to prepare a separate image for an eye mask. Most likely, they just you, you can just, just use the same shape of the eye white unless you want to do very, very detailed um, animations with eyelids at the bottom. Then you want to do uh, different poses with the eye masks. So here, for example, I can go to Smile Close, and you'll notice that I don't have any other elements. The only thing I have is inside the eye white, which is that smiley close um, little wave thing. Now, the reason why I put this image inside the eye white and not the iris is because when we animate, the iris is always moving about. The eye white is base, is, is most is, is normally static. It's, it moves a bit, but not that much. So for these expressions that I have here, like eye smile, smile close, eye close, I only have one element. And I don't want these to move too much. So I place these image layers inside the eye white folder. And we have nothing inside for eye risk and the mask folder. When I go down to eye squint, the same deal. I only have one image layer. Okay. And I'm sorry, this one is for the eye squint. Here we will have three. We will have the iris, the eye white, and the mask. Again, the mask has the same shape as the eye white for this expression. 
And the same thing for the iris change. We have three elements in this particular pose. We have the iris, we have the eye white, you can turn that on and off to toggle it. We have the eye white, and we have the mask, which we made in sort of a grayish transparent color there. All right, so we're good. So I wish to bring, uh, first of all, I'm gonna bring my first eye, my left eye. I'm gonna bring in uh, the normal stance, the normal eye pose. I'm gonna select all of that, and I'm gonna bring it into my template character here, and I'm gonna adjust it right there. But I need to make sure that all these three elements are inside their respective folder. So make sure it's inside uh, the left eye, and I'm gonna bring this inside normal, the normal folder. And then once inside the normal folder, I need to allocate each one into their specific subfolder. So I'm gonna bring in the iris, just like that, iris subfolder, then the eye white, and the mask. Now you need to always make sure that you have these elements inside. Remember, if you're working with Photoshop and you've got all these small folders, it's easy to get lost. So always make sure everything is properly placed inside their own folder. So I'm gonna save this PSD file. I'm gonna save this as a IPSD. And I'm gonna bring this into Crazy Talk Animator 3. I'm gonna replace um, uh, the, the, uh, the original eyes that I had on my character. So inside Crazy Talk Animator 3.1, make sure that you're inside the composer mode. And I'm going to import PSD assets. I'm gonna choose that file I just saved. We're gonna open this. And for the loading options, we're gonna choose partial update and maintain the previous bone settings and sprite transformation. I don't wish to move things at this point. Just click on okay. And in the park selection, uh, go to talking head and okay. And we're ready. Let me turn off this bone here. We can see things better. Okay, so our eye, I can always move this if I'd like, and it'll move all the elements together. Let me go back to stage. I'm gonna refresh my character in the stage, and I'm gonna test some of this puppeteering. So let's go to facial puppet, choose one of the profiles and a face control, and let's preview. And you'll notice that my iris really moves around while my eye white stays in the same position or relatively the same position. Now, if I blink my character, you'll notice that I'm gonna be using the same sprites as the, um, the, the, the previous sprites of my character. Let me show you right now. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna blink and you'll see that he's using the sprites, the original sprites that were with my original character. This is because I haven't imported the new sprites. I can go to face here. You can see that the only uh, sprites that we've brought in are the ones that we saved. So we need to replace all these other ones, the six ones, right? Smile, close, eye close, scare, eye squint, and iris change. So let's do just that. I'm gonna go back into Photoshop and we're gonna bring in all these other elements for all the other eye poses that we have. And we're gonna make sure that everything is placed inside their respective subfolders too. So let's do this. Let's go to the first pose, which should be the smile close. I'm gonna fast forward this a bit. Basically, you know the drill. I can toggle these on and off just to make sure that I have them in the right position. Make sure that each eye pose is brought into its respective folder. And again, um, with the eye poses that you don't have um, different, the three elements for iris and eye white and mask, you only want to place that element inside the eye white folder. Again, this is to ensure that that eye is not moving around. If you put it into the iris folder and you start puppeteering, remember the iris is always moving and it moves really dramatically. So you don't want that to happen with, um, with the elements that only have one sprite. And then the last two for eye squint and iris change, these do have three elements. They have iris, eye white, and the eye mask. So I'm gonna make sure that they're inside their respective folders. And I think we're almost done. Make sure it's in the right position, test it out, and then bring them into their subfolders. Great, now for the right eye, instead of doing the whole thing all over again, I'm just gonna duplicate my left eye and I'm gonna re re rename it as a right eye. 
And then I'm going to delete the original right eye folder. We don't need that. So this is a clever way of doing it. So I'm going to grab my right eye and reposition it onto the other side. Now, I don't, I don't finish here. I need to flip all my images. I need to flip them horizontally. So let's go to Free Transform, right click here, and flip horizontally. This will ensure that you have a mirror copy of all your left side elements for your right side. And this is a very cool and quick trick. So I'm going to save this one. Save as, and this is a new PSD file, overwrite, yes please. And I'm going to do the same thing in Crazy Talk Animator 3.1. I am going to go into the backstage, select your character, go to the backstage or composer mode, and let's re-import that new PSD file. So we've done this several times. Let's find my file here, right there. And for the loading options, we're going to choose partial update, the same thing, bone settings, sprite transformation. And we're also going to choose the part selection. We're going to choose a talking head. This is to ensure that we maintain the same parameters as we did in the, the, previous, um, the, the previous elements that we dropped in. So let me turn off the show bone. We can zoom in. And I can adjust my eye. So I here, feel free to grab your eye and move it around. Remember, only if you're in, in the composer mode can you do this. Adjust the, the position. I think we should be okay. And if I go to Sprite Editor, you'll see that now we have all our new sprites, or my, my new eye poses, eye, eye pose sprites for my eye, both for the left eye and the right eye. So I think we're done. Let's go back to stage, and this will refresh my character. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see these expressions. All right. So let's go select my character and let's go to facial puppet and let's give this a try. I could choose a facial animation profile, face control and preview. And that works nicely. I can choose different expressions here. Nice. I'm blinking and we have all the elements necessary all the new elements that we imported. I can choose upset. This one is scared. So this works very, very well if you follow the proper uh, PSD templates that we have. And again, make sure that you drop in the, the, the necessary eye um, image layers into, into each specific uh, folder uh, and subfolder. So this works pretty neatly. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. We hope it helps you on how to make a fully functional masked eye. And uh, stick around for new tutorials that we're going to have for Crazy Talk Animator 3.1. Thank you.